Hi, welcome to our service for students in grades 5, 6, 7, and 8 from Mount Pleasant Christian Church. My name is Mike Sheely. I'm the middle school pastor, and I'll be your host today. Um, as we get started in our service, I want to make sure you're ready for our game. Uh, we've got a special guest, our new small group leader, Tony Imberja. He's not a new small group leader, but he's a different one this week from Brian. Uh, just have a piece of paper and a pen or a note card, something you can write down. We're going to see how well you can guess the possible answers that we gave Tony in three questions this week. Then we're going to have our teaching time. You need to have a Bible, like always, a print Bible or the Bible app. You need to have pen and paper to take some notes or the event notes in the Bible app. If you need any of those links, you can find those at mpcc5678.com slash online. Uh, after our teaching time today, we give you a chance to interact, answer some questions, and see how other students answer using a, a resource called Cluster. Uh, we do that from about 6.50 to 7.15 tonight. Uh, again, if you need the link for Cluster, if you've already subscribed to the album, you're good to go. That will update at about 6.45 to 6.50 tonight with the new questions for today's lesson. If you haven't joined our album yet, there's a link at mpcc5678.com slash online that will help you join that. And then finally, at about 7.15, we're going to do some live interaction uh, with games, uh, with some time for you to ask some questions and just kind of hang out, pray together. That'll all be on Zoom. Uh, that'll start about 7.15 tonight. That link is in an email we sent to parents. You can also find it at our online hub there. Uh, and it needs a password. And so make sure you get that from your parents before 7.15 tonight. All right, it's time to dive in with Tony and see what kind of answers he picked and how well you can do at guessing what he said. All right, hey everybody, it's time for our possibilities game again. Today, our special guest is one of our other small group leaders, Tony. Uh, Tony, before we get started with the game, why don't you just give everybody just a quick snippet of who you are, how you serve with us, and one unusual thing about you they may not know. Wow. Okay. Uh, I serve uh, what would be rising eighth grade boys right now, uh, seventh grade boys last year. My son Daniel was in the eighth grade, and so I serve with Brian Wilson, um, and we share responsibilities for a group, and it's great. Um, ah, something about me that people don't know. I get up at 3, 3.30 in the morning every day to work because our offices are in Asia, so it's the end of the day for them. Wow. All right. Okay. <laughs> I think you probably beat everybody else in here at what time you get up. So, okay. <laughs> Hey, let's play there's our always game. some of those young, there's always some of those younger people that they're seeing three o'clock in the morning on the way home. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Hey, we gave Tony uh, uh, three different situations where he had to pick some unusual possibilities, some questions here. Let's get to our first one. You guys are going to try to guess what it is that he picked. Uh, for our first one, we said when it rains, instead of water, this falls from the sky. His options were a tiny edible jelly slugs. B, lollipops, C, cash money, or D, a single large duck that rampages the town. So we're going to give you 30 seconds to try to guess what is it you think that he picked from this list. All right. Um, Tony, while they're picking from this, uh, these are some unusual questions. Um, when you have, uh, gosh, when you have interviewed or been talking to people before, is there any kind of weird questions that, that would fit in this realm that you've been asked or had to answer? Or with dealing with work in Asia, are there anything that you've had to eat that we think would be unusual? Well, duck is very popular over there. So a large duck that rampaged through the city, um, that's common occurrence that see ducks running around places. Um, also, things like snake and salamander. And there was one restaurant that we used to go to that had two badgers. And somebody purchased those badgers and ate them. So okay. different things, different things like that in Asia, as we have all seen and heard um, sure. as sure. of late, that maybe we didn't know about from the uh, China wet markets. Um, but yes, some very unusual things. All right. Well, let's see how he answered that question. He uh, picked C, cash money. So why did this get your vote for raining from the sky? Well, I think if it was raining cash money, think of all the good you could do with it. And then you could buy ducks and gummy bears and all of those things anyway, right? <laughs> okay, perfect. All right. Let's get to our second one now. This time he gets to choose a superpower. Here's where his four options. Uh, invisibility, but you can't see anything. Uh, you can read minds, but it's all in French. You can fly, but only upside down. 
or your fingertips shoot spaghetti. So we're giving you guys 30 seconds to try to guess what did Tony pick from that list. Uh, Tony, if if it wasn't from this list and you could pick a superpower, what other superpower would be something you would want to have? Oh, wow. I, I've always dreamed of flying. I've had many, many dreams, even today, where I'm flying, you know, flying along along the power lines and things like that. So I would have to say it's probably flying because okay. it's just very freeing. Okay. Well, you guys that are guessing, you got two more seconds to write your answer down. Let's see if flying came up in his actual answer. Uh, from this list of questions, Tony chose D, shooting spaghetti from fingertips. So why did that one come up this time? Well, I'm Italian, Mike. Come on. If, you know, if you're going to have spaghetti out of your fingertips, think you could wrap people up in it. If you were hungry in the middle of the battle, you could just have some. It would be great. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Something a little different than slinging webs from your fingers. So nice. Yes. <laughs> okay. Let's get on to his third question here. Choose a place to live. Um, so this could be uh, A, a floating castle. B, underground cave system with a bat butler, a battler, if you will, named Cecil. A house made of candy, but kids are always stealing your walls and stuff because they're made of candy. Or D, a yacht manned by a tiny squirrel sailors. Wow. Okay, so while they're, while they're trying to guess through these, um, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you choose to live and why? It would be either Jerusalem or Tel Aviv, Israel. I've been to Israel many, many, many times and just love the country, love the people. It is obviously the birthplace of our faith also. Um, really, it's Jesus, but nonetheless, it's a physical area. And so it's just, it's just wonderful. Wow. Okay. All right. Let's see what he picked for an imaginary place to live. Um, of these options... Tony chose D, a yacht manned by tiny squirrel sailors. So why did that get your vote out of our options? Uh, squirrel. Yeah. Perfect. So distracted. <laughs> Never see anything. Wow. Yep. <laughs> all right. Hey, well, Tony, thank you for, for joining with us. Um, while thank we're you. all socially distant and virtually connecting, uh, is there any tips or encouragement you have for the students that are watching, either the guys in your group or just the middle school students in general? Get outside and enjoy the outdoors. Get some fresh air. Keep a routine. You know, just keep a positive attitude. And read your Bible. Nice. Very good. <laughs> love those. Love those. So thank you so much for joining us. Hey, everybody, that was our possibilities game. And now we're going to shift into getting ready for the teaching time. starting soon. Welcome back for week four of our Battle Gear series as we're making our way through uh, Ephesians together this summer. I want to start today by asking you a couple questions. Are you somebody who ever has doubts about like if God really loves you? Did Jesus really die for you? Could his forgiveness really forgive your sins? Do you ever worry about your faith and if you love God enough and if you're doing enough things to make God love you? If you ever had some of those doubts or some of those worries, we're going to help you with that tonight. And maybe on the flip side, uh, you're a Christian, but when we talk about sharing Jesus with other people, that makes you nervous. When you think about talking to friends who don't go to church about you going to church or about Jesus, you wonder if you'll have all the answers. You wonder if you'll be able to, to share the right things with them, to answer their questions. If that makes you anxious, we're also going to help you tonight. Because when it comes to the armor of God, we're dealing with the next piece. We're looking at a letter, and here tonight we're dealing with shoes or boots. 
uh, and it's in the book of Ephesians in our Bible. So you can navigate there. If you're using the event notes, it's right there ready for you. If you have a print Bible or your Bible app, you can find it here in our table of contents. It's a letter written by a man named Paul who is an amazing follower of Jesus who wrote all this stuff down to help people in his day and it continues to help us today. And we're looking today at Ephesians 6, 10 through 15, and especially verse 15. Would you read it with me? A final word. Be strong in the Lord and His mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you'll be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news, so that you will be fully prepared. Well, today we're talking about shoes. We've covered the belt of truth. We've covered the body armor of righteousness. Today's it's shoes. And when I think about shoes, I think about this moment in 1991 when Michael Jordan was leading the Chicago Bulls to their first NBA championship of what would be six in the 90s, the repeat three-peat. He comes down the lane. He looks like he's going up for a right-handed duck. He switches to his left hand and puts the ball up for two points. It was an amazing feat of anti-gravity basketball. And there on his feet are the shoes. If you're a shoe person, if you're into Jordans, these are the Air Jordan 6s. Out of all the shoes Jordan has ever had, Nike has ever made, these are my favorites. I've never actually had a pair, and I'm not good at basketball, so I don't know they would actually help me that much. But I just like the design of these more than any others. But that's not quite what Paul had in mind when he's talking about the shoes, especially when he's thinking about soldiers. Um, when you think about shoes, we've been looking at superheroes, and what do you think about them? These are some cosplay boots for the superhero Flash. And our friends that have been helping us out throughout this series this summer uh, have some great stuff to show you and to tell you about boots and feet and heroes and how all that ties together with what we're going to be looking at today from Paul's letter. So check out this video from them. So um, I'm, I'm going to go really geeky because this is uh, one of the boots styled after The Flash, but it's from the TV series season four. Technically in the comics, he has uh, golden boots, but I really like this design. <laughs> um, so I wanted to make these. Okay. So I did. So there are, are four different flashes. The, Barry's the most common one. He's the one that the current TV show is about. He's the one that you see the most frequently. As he's learning to use that, he needs his suit and he needs the, the boots and things like that to keep him safe so that he doesn't um, cause too much friction, sure. catch himself on fire kind yeah. of thing. Um, when he's first learning, he burns through things because he's running so fast. And so he does need it. All right. Well, I'm Jack Frost from Rise of the Guardians. And um, I really enjoy his character because he's very, he's very relatable. He goes through a lot of struggles of like finding like what his purpose is, like why, why, why is he here? What is his purpose in being a guardian and things? Like how is he supposed to help people? And so the story goes into that, and I think that's very cool. Oh, uh, and the shoes because his he doesn't actually wear shoes in the movie, but for like conventions and stuff, I need to have foot gear, otherwise they won't let you in. So I made these shoes out of like an old pair of flip-flops and then I used plastic wrap. Okay. So you to make, I folded over plastic wrap to go ahead and make the strings for it, so. Nice, so you're fake barefoot. Yep. Okay. Um, I am cosplaying the Easter Bunny, Bunny Munch, from the same TV show, Rise of the Guardians. He's the Easter Bunny. And the reason I chose this cosplay is because I love the Easter Bunny and this movie. He is amazing. He's Australian and just he's a fun loving character that I somewhat relate to in some degrees. Um, and also he, he's a bunny. So he has bunny feet right here. So very tall. I'm, I'm a very tall bunny. I think in the character I'm doing, Jack Frost's case, um, he's able to like walk around and because he's basically supposed to be like winter impersonated kind of a thing. He's able to walk around and like freeze things with his feet, so that allows him the ability to kind of like, kind of like Elsa, run and like freeze water or whatever. But he also does that to like um, trees, trees and like phone poles. But he also often uses it to like bounce off of buildings, like frost, like wind to bounce off of buildings. And so in that case, it allows him speed 
mobility to get away or get towards whatever he's facing. Yeah, with Bunny Mun, since he has Bunny feet, has really strong legs, a lot of kicking. He can kick, he can bounce really high, he can get to places quickly, so he has mobility and the strength and like the defense as well. Yeah, and with his feet, he has a special ability where he just taps the ground and a tunnel will open up that he can go through and get to wherever he needs to go. Can you talk about, like, have you had an opportunity or do you know someone who's had an opportunity where because of cosplay, uh, that's built a connection where they're able to share deeper things like their faith? Okay, I remember this. I was talking about this and she's like, yeah, I don't know a whole lot about the Bible or whatever. I just know the name Jesus and stuff. And so that opened up the window for us to go ahead and like share to her basically like what the gospel is and things. And like there are definitely parts that she's like, I don't completely really understand this. So, yeah, through like just being around people like that and like sharing like our experiences of like, oh, we got to leave early because I have Bible study this evening. She's like, hey, what's that? What is that? And stuff. So it does provide opportunity. Wow. Really creative from an old pair of boots into cosplay costume equipment to be flash. And then to get all dressed up in the heat, we really appreciate that. To be the Easter Bunny and Jack Flash, a couple superheroes, one with giant rabbit feet that have powers, and one that actually goes around barefoot, even though everything's like freezing cold. It's pretty crazy. But here's the deal. When Paul's writing about footwear, he's thinking about what soldiers would have worn his day. That would have looked more like sandals with nails to the bottom to give them a grip. Here's a picture of what soldiers would wear today for combat boots that would be the armor of God, the battle gear that we're talking about. That kind of helps us connect better. Solid footwear, protective, helps them to march and go on over whatever terrain they're on. These are important equipment when it comes to fighting in battle. In fact, you can get different boots and different liners based on whether you're fighting in a hot climate or a wet climate, a cold climate, whatever that is. Boots are a significant part of a soldier's armor even today. But we're talking about spiritual armor and fighting in spiritual battles, so let's unpack this a little bit more. In 1 Peter 5, 8 through 9, um, Peter, another apostle of Jesus, points out to something really important to us to remember about how real this is. He says, stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. Peter reminds us the fight that we're fighting is not a physical battle, not an enemy we can see, but he's cunning and sneaky and vicious like a lion ready to attack. And just like Paul, he uses that phrase to stand firm. Well, in Ephesians 6, verse 15, we saw that phrase. Let's go back and look at that again. Paul said, for shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so you'll be fully prepared. Well, then the question comes up, like, what is the good news? Or maybe in your Bible, in your translation, it says the gospel. That's a word we hear at church, but we don't always necessarily understand what does that word mean. If I were to ask you, how could you explain that in your own words to a friend your age? Would you be able to do it? I think some of you could, and I think some of you might struggle with it. And so we're going to get some resources and some help for you. Uh, in the notes of this video, we have a link to our Friends of the Bible Project. They did a whole video and study on the word gospel, or the Greek word euangelion. So if you want to see a whole lot more, we don't have time to show it as a part of our teaching tonight, but you can follow that link and go watch that video. It'll really help you understand the good news from a whole Bible perspective. Here's a few things we're going to unpack for us tonight. If you look at the Bible, you may see four books that are called the Gospels, and that's Jesus' four biographies. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the authors. They're the titles in there. But these are called Gospels because these books tell the good news of Jesus' life. Well, what is that good news? Jesus brought God's kingdom here on earth. He lived a selfless life for other people. He died for everyone's sins. And God raised him from the dead. The hope that we have today is possible because of what Jesus did for us. That's the good news. As we look through this, Jesus is the true Lord of the world, the real king of all creation not an imposter, not a liar. And as we look at this good news it's talking about, that's where we get this from, the good news of Jesus and what he's done for us. Well, then that's the good news. What is the peace Paul talks about? Well, often when we think about peace, we have a few different ideas. And the, again, they're a great resource. The Bible Project has a whole video on peace. And it talks about that from Shalom in the Old Testament to Irene in the New Testament. And you can find that link in our description below to get more details. Here's our quick abbreviated version of it today. 
peace is often thought of as the absence of war or conflict. And there's not a war going on, there's not conflict, there's peace. But in the Bible, that word means a lot more than just the absence of something. It often means, the, uh, it points to the presence of something better in its place. Not just no war or no, no conflict, but something better replacing that absence. Because of our sin, because of our disobedience, we've broken our relationship with God, and we've created conflict with Him and with other people in our lives. Jesus had to come along to make peace by restoring to wholeness that broken relationship between God and people. He offers that peace to us as a gift if we'll accept it. You can't earn it. You can't like work your way up to it. It's something you simply receive from Jesus as a gift. Well, check this out in Romans 4, verses 25 through 5.1. Paul says, He was handed over to die because of our sins, and he was raised to life to make us right with God. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have, there it is, peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. We don't have a, a healed relationship with God because of anything that we've done. We have that peace because of what Jesus did for us. So let me go back to that question from earlier in our lesson tonight. Do you ever have doubts or worries about if God loves you enough or if he cares enough for you? We want to encourage you tonight that God loves you so much. And here's a reminder in Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Look at these verses and see how much is all about God and what he did for us. God saved us. It's a gift from God. It's not a reward. We're God's masterpiece. He created us anew in Jesus so we can do the things that he planned for us. We don't have, you may still have doubts and worries, but when you look at the truth of the Bible, what you see from writers like Paul is that it's not about what we do. God loved us when we were helpless. He saved us when we needed rescuing. When we were sinners separating ourselves and breaking that relationship, he sent Jesus to heal and restore and bring peace to make things better, to make things the way they're supposed to be. So you can let go of those doubts and let go of those worries and trust that it's not about you. It's about God and what he's done for us. In Ephesians 6.15 again, that verse, the shoes of peace, the good news that come to us. We can have that sure footing like a soldier with his boots ready for battle, like a Roman soldier ready to stand strong. We can stand firm because doubts won't knock us over. The worries that we have won't topple us over. Our faith is stronger than that if we simply understand it's all about Jesus and what he's done for us and not about what we can do for ourselves. You don't have to worry about if you love God enough or if he loves you. He loves you so much. He sent his only son on a rescue mission to save you. It's not about your ability. It's about God loving you so much. He took care of your sin problem through Jesus. If you haven't accepted that yet, I want to invite you, you can get a hold of me. We have contact information in the video to set up what we call a starting point. It's simply a conversation lasts about 45 minutes. Talk with you and one of your parents about what that means to accept that gift from Jesus and become a follower of him. But today we also said, hey, when it comes to those boots, um, you know you've got a source of peace. You have a source of stability. The good news of Jesus gives you a way to know that you are right with God, not because of what you've done. But when you accept that gift, when you follow Jesus and get baptized and, and live a new life with him, it's all accepting what he's done for you. But maybe you're nervous. Like, I don't know if I can share that with somebody else. And what if they ask a question I don't have an answer to? They may not think I'm a real believer. And, and what, what, what? We get so nervous to share. And the flip side of what Paul's saying here is that we can be ready. And he paints a picture for how important and how significant this is for us. Check this out. He says, how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they've never heard about him? How can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? That is why the scriptures say, how beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news. If you're a Christian and you tell someone else about Jesus, he says, you have beautiful feet. Maybe no one's told you that before. That may be kind of weird. Especially if you're a dude. 
I don't know, but here's the deal. He's saying that we're not just soldiers, we're messengers. We're telling people how to be rescued. We're telling them not that we've done anything, but what God's done for us. You don't have to know all of Scripture. All you have to know when someone asks is to tell them what you do know. Tell them what you've learned about Jesus, why he's important to you. And if you think you don't know enough, we've got some great reading plans in the Bible app. You can go through and read more about those Gospels, those biographies, and you can get to know Jesus more so you have more to tell people. Check this out too. It's the way we're supposed to live our lives. The Apostle Peter, again, here in 1 Peter 3, 15 and 16, he says, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. But do this in a gentle and respectful way. This isn't about us shouting at someone that they're wrong and we're right. This isn't about us debating with somebody online about how they're going to hell and we're going to heaven. This isn't about us thinking we have to have all the answers when somebody asks a question. This is about us recognizing that God rescued us. He saved us. And there are other people living lives that are broken and hurting and that need that hope that we've received from God. And it's simply helping them know how to find that hope and telling them in a gentle and respectful way what we already know. That good news prepares us to share. If you're nervous about it, read some more so you're more confident in it. Everybody gets nervous. I love speaking in front of people and I still get nervous when I get up to speak and teach. That's just a part of life. And sometimes it's a part of the responsibility we have. We realize that. But when you realize that it's also God working with you and through you, it's not just about you, you can have some confidence that you're ready to go and to share, to tell people because you don't know everything, but you want them to know what you already know and you can learn together. And then how cool is it? Process all this with me. Are you ready for this opportunity? If you have this confidence that can fight down the doubts and worries you have to stand strong against spiritual attacks from the devil and his demons, if you can be prepared to be a messenger to go and to share the good news about Jesus and what he's done for people, for your friends and your family, because of what he's done in your life, that changes everything. It changes conversations. It changes relationships. It brings hope to people who feel like there is no hope. It brings light to people who feel like the world is so dark. And the best part is when you start to understand the good news of Jesus and you live that out in your life, that's not just good news. That's the best news you've ever heard. And if it's so great, don't you want to share that with somebody else? Let's pray. God, we thank you so much that Paul and Peter and others wrote down these words, not just to help people in their day, but to help us today. For those that are watching who have doubts or worries about if they have earned enough of your love, remind them through this teaching and through your word that you loved us so much you sent Jesus to die for us. And for those who have accepted that gift and are following you and get nervous about sharing that good news with other people, help them to have a confidence that knows it's a great opportunity and a great responsibility and that they don't go alone, but you are there helping them. Thank you, God, for this great responsibility and this great opportunity. Thank you most of all for Jesus. Amen.